The Argonauts by Alistair Crowley. Society for the Propagation of Religious Truth. 1904. Argonauti? Actus Primus. Jason. Affectionately to the author of Iron, admiringly to Dr. A. W. Verrill and the Reverend F. F. Kelly on the occasion of my voyage of 1904. Argonauti? Actus Primus. Peleus. Jason. Semi-chorus of Lolkian men. Semi-chorus of Lolkian women. Scene, the throne chamber of King Peleus. The prophecies are spoken in vain. The auguries vainly cast. Since twenty years of joyous reign. In peace are overpassed. And those who cursed our king's desires. Are branded in the brow for liars. We heard the aged prophet speak. The doom of woe and fear. We wait with blanched, and icy cheek. The one and twentieth year. For justice lies, as seeds lie, dead. But lifts at last a gorgon head. What fear can reach our Thessaly? What war disturb our peace? Long established is young Amity. Made blushing over Greece. And fair Locus stands, sublime. A monument to lessen time. But if such fear were come indeed. Who reads the riddle dread? Spoken in frenzy by the seer. Against the royal head. We know the rhyme's involving spell. Its purport is impenetrable. We heard his foolish maundering. But, bred in wiser ways. We have forgotten, do ye sing. The rune of ancient days. Today his curse cacophonous. Shall earn at least a laugh from us. Oh, when the armed hand is nigh. Locus shall not see. Peace shining from Athena's sky. Until the fleece be free. Until the god of war shall scorn. The sting, and trust him to the horn. Until the son of spring forsake. His eastern home, and rise. Within our temple walls and make. One glory of the skies. Until the king shall die and live. Athena never shall forgive. Surely, O oh friends, at last tis clear. The man was mad indeed. Such nonsense we did never hear. As this prophetic screed. More, as tis never like this land. Should ever see an armed hand. Where is the son of Tyro and Poseidon? Locus king has here a dwelling place. See you the sword shake, and the iron hand. Not shaking, the man's mood is full of wrath. Peace, foolish. Were it so, we would not see. Amy. This stranger seems most ominous. Where is the son of Tyro and Poseidon? This is the palace place of Peleus. Son of Poseidon, of Lolcus king. Lolcus king is here, in very truth. Where is the son of Tyro? Who art thou? Know me for Jason and great Ison's heir. We learn good news, most enviable sir. That Ison hath such grand inheritance. You have grown fat beneath an evil rule. Your period is at hand. Go, one of you, and drag the impious wretch before my sight. Ison. Thy father, play not with my wrath. My mood is something dangerous. Dangerous, sir. I go indeed, to bring some danger more. Hither. Poltroonery dislikes the wise. Fair maidens, I salute you pleasantly. Welcome, oh welcome to the land. Young heir of prophecy. The armed hand, the glittering brand. The scabbard's jewelry. That wealth avails not, cast it down. The sword alone may win the crown. Ye languish wretched in the tyrant's rule. Most happy are we, king. But change is sweet. A short-lived omen of success to me. Nay, but adventure and the prophecy. I see I have but small support in you. Not so, great Jason. Had I suffered much. My spirit had been broken to the scourge. Now, being strong and happy, with what joy. I cry, Evoe. Revolution. I have grown weary of this tiresome peace. I promise you intense unhappiness. Here is the ugly monster. Out. To think, we once believed him reverend and refined. Saw majesty in all that tottering gait. And honor in the goat-like beard of him. A week ago your blue eyes were in tears. Sidelong regarding the old mountebank. Today I would not be his concubine. For all Locus, for all Thessaly.
I see the same glance seek out Jason now. A, hey, there's a man. What muscles. What fine fire. In the quick eye. What vigor and warm strength. Yes, in your wishes. But indeed he is. A proper man. Away, you ancient egg. With what audacious foot, and impious voice. Strides this young man and talks. Let him advance. Trembling at our offended majesty. Who art thou whose rude summons startles us? From work of state to listen a young mouth. Beardless. Speak, man, for shortly thou shalt die. Athena speaks. Ah, there's a fine retort. Goddesses, speak and men list reverently. Could she not find a fitter messenger? Her cause is Jason's. Jason therefore speaks. Aha! A suppliant to our clemency. I did mistake the gesture and the sword. Angrily gripped, the foot flung terribly. Foremost, the fierce, constrained attitude. But, as a suppliant, tell thy woeful tale. Sad youth. Some woman thou hast loved and lost. Thou hast robbed me of this kingdom. Thou hast kept. My father, poor half-witted man. A slave. And parasite about thy court, one grief. The more I add to this account of thine. Myself a babe thou didst seek out to slay. And, I being hid, with fishhooks bent with lies. And gilded with most specious promises. Cunningly angled for old Chiron's grace. To catch me yet. Athena hears me swear. To write all this, nay, answer me before. Anger get all the spoil of me, and drink. Thy life blood in one gulp. Descend that dais. Then thou a suppliant at my awful knee. And thus, perhaps, at least get grace of life. And if I say I will not yield the throne. I am a force to take it. Are my friends. Not faithful. Who draws, sword for Peleus. Shall we not slay thee this presumptuous fool? I am a force, I say. I wrestled once. From sunrise to sunset with Heracles. Great Heracles. Not till the full moon rose. Availed his might to lay me prone. Beware. Ye weakling knaves. I am a force, I say. Rebellious youth, the justice of thy cause. And force I will admit, where force goes far. But thinkest thou wait no while there in thee. For thee a guest in these my halls, for thee. Whose hands are dipped not yet in blood so deep. As to have murdered an old man, and him. Thy father's brother. Justice covers all. The furies cannot follow if a man. To his own heart be reconciled. They feed. On his own bosom, nay. Are born thereof. An A in clan he might elude, but these. Blood of his blood, he shall nor slay nor scape. My heart hath never pastured on regret. Or pang for thee. My justice covers all. That one word, justice. Covers all indeed. To thine own self. But thinkest thou for a word. To ruin many years of common weal. And poison in an hour the politics. Of states and thrones for, justice. Thou art just. But wisdom, but the life of innocence. The happiness of all, are better served. By solemn thought and weighty counsel held. This is more simple. I abolish thee. One sword sweep, and assume thy. Politics. Thou art this simple. Will my liege allies. Willing with age and wisdom to accord. Not tremble at thy firebrand breed, not think. Who hath in blood, an old man's blood, made fast. A perilous footing, may betimes discover. More justice, and invasion footing it. Hard after. Wilt thou plunge all Thessaly. All Greece, in haste and sudden armament. Fury of thought and frenzy of deed, at once. For justice. Wouldst thou be so violent. For justice, save in thine own cause, O oh boy. And wilt thou pity not the happy days. And storm unshattered abodes of Greece. Athena, who is justice, also is. Wisdom, and also she who buildeth towns. Think also, I am born of deity. I am inured to majesty, I know. How venerable is the sight of kings. And how the serpent treason writhes beneath. The royal foot, conscious of its own shame. And how the lion of rebellion cowers. Before the presence of a king unarmed. 
quelled by one mild glance of authority, a king and justice shorn of majesty. Still the one fool's word, justice, answers all. Would thou wert older and more politic? Would I were liar with thine own foul brand? The gods are weary of thy cousining. To proof, then, boy, I lay my scepter by. Put off my crown, descend the steps to thee. Here is my breast. Look firmly in my face. And slay me. Is there fear at large and deep? In mine old eyes. Or shudderest thou with fear? More hate than fear. In sooth, I cannot strike. A king is not so slain, except a madman, may fall upon him with averted head. Indeed, I conquer. Even so, beware. Victory ill-nurtured breeds the babe defeat. Listen, my brother's son. Nay, stoop not so. Bending ashamed brows upon the earth, I am well weary of the world of men. I grow both old and hateful to myself. Most on the throne, power which to youth is sweet. To age looks fearful. Also I have wept. Alas! How often! And repented me. Of those unkingly deeds whereby I gained. This throne whose joy is turned to bitterness. I will make peace with thee, and justice still. Shall have a home and shrine in Thessaly. Be patient notwithstanding. Prove thyself. Valiant and wise, and reign here. If in sooth, an aged counsellor, whose reverent hair, commands a hearing, may assist at all. Wisdom to wisdom added, I am here. Yet would I rather slide into my grave. Untroubled with the destinies of states, even of such an one so dear to me, who thus a score of years have nurtured it, I hear thee, thou art grown like royal wine, better with age. Forgive my violence, the fish bites hard. There is a prophecy, once stirred, Locus never shall know peace, till in its temple hangs the golden fleece. Now thou hast so disquieted our days. The time is come, seek thou ears isle, and hang this trophy on our temple walls. Tell me what is this fleece? Let women sing, in Uri's grove, the sordid trees. The world's heart wandering, hangs evermore the golden fleece, the glory of the spring, the light of far ears coast such glamour as befits a ghost, before that glittering woof the sun, shrinks back abashed in shame, the splendour of the shining one, one torrent fleece of flame, what heart may think, what tongue may sing, the glory of the golden thing, about the grove the scorpion coils, inextricably wind, within the woods exceeding toils, the shadow hot and blind, there lurk his serpent sorceries, the guardian of the golden fleece, the dragon lifts his nostrils wide, and jets a spout of fire, the warrior questing turns aside, not daring to desire, and madness born of Uri's lurks, behind the wonder of his works, be sure that were the woodland way, tracked snakewise to the core, the dragon slain or driven away, the good fleece won by war, not yet should Uri's sink his spear, or fail of flinging forth a fear, the torch of madness should be lit, and follow him afar. Upon his prow should madness sit, a baleful beacon star, and in his home despair and strife, lie in his bosom for a wife. But oh, the glory of the quest, the gainless goodly prize, the fairest form man ever caressed, the word he heard most wise. All those of life avoid and cease, before the winning of the fleece, O nameless splendour of the gods, begotten hardly of heaven, unspoken treasure of the abodes, beyond the lightning levin, no misery, no despair may pay, the joy to hold thee for a day. Athena's servant wrecks not much of Ares, are thine eyes kindled at the golden thought, mine eyes see farther than the fleece of gold. What heroes can attain so fair a thing? I have some friends who would esteem this quest. Lightly, a maiden's pleasure wandering, through lilied fields a summer's afternoon, the gods give strength, I pray them send thee back, safe to this throne, I will not see thy face, ever again until the quest be won, rule thou with justice in my sacred seat, until I come again, the gods thy speed, the hardy hero goes to find, the living fleece of gold, 
or else, some death may chance to bind. Those limbs of manly mould, in sooth, I doubt if I shall earn, the singer's fee for his return. Think now, I feared that fool. It must be true. That guilt is timorous. A. Eh? When danger's none. Let but swords flash, and guilt grows God for might. Indeed I rule, until he come again. A. Eh? When the stars fall, Jason shall be king. Explicit actus primus. Argonauti? Actus secundus. Argo? To the Hun? P. Ramanaton, CMG. And Rudyard Kipling on the occasion of sunrise. Argonauti? Actus secundus. Argus the son of Phrixus, Jason, Heracles, Castor. Pollux, Theseus, Orpheus. Chorus of heroes. Chorus of shipbuilders. Scene, an open place near Locus. The sound of the hammer and steel. The song of the level and line. The whir of the whistling wheel. The ring of the axe on the pine. The joy of the ended labor. As the good ship plunges free. By sound of pipe and tabor. To front the sparkling sea. The mystery woven spell. The voyage of golden gain. The free full sails that swell. On the swell of the splendid main. The song of the axe and the wedge. The clang of the hammer and chain. Keen whistle of chisel and edge. Smooth, swish of the sliding plane. Hail to the honor of toil. Hail. To the ship flown free. Hail. To the golden spoil. And the glamour of all the sea. A good stout song, friend Argus, matching well. The mighty blows thou strikest, yet methinks. One blow should serve to drive yon nail well home. Where thou with tenfold stroke. Good Heracles, not all men owe thy strength. Nay, let him try. Take my toy hammer. I have split the wood. Vexation sits tremendous on his brow. Beware a hero's fury. Thou art mad, Argus, to play so dangerous a trick. True, Theseus, if he had but hit his thumb. Cease this fool's talk. The moon waits not the work. The sun will sink no later for your pleasure. Unto thy work, man. He that traps a lion. And baits him for an hour, and lets him go. Does well to think before he tempt again. The forest paths. The wise man wisely thinks. That nothing is but wisdom, and myself. Think strongly that no other thing exists. But strength, so with his subtleties of mind. He baffles me, and I lift up my club. And with one blow bespatter his wise brains. A, not for nothing did the darkness reign. Those eight and forty hours, O Zeus begot. Tell me, friend master, how the work goes on. When shall our gallant vessel breast the deep? When shall we see the sun sink over the poop? And look toward moonrise, and the land be lost. And the perched watcher on the mast behold. The melting mirror of the ocean meet. The crystallizing concave of the sky. All this shall happen when the work is done. How many moons, friend fool, before that day? These things are known not even to the gods. Except the father only. Fools must talk. I talk, divulging nothing. I strike thee, yet act not. Hero, stay that heavy hand. The ship shall sail ere spring. But now you talk. More as befits a workman to a king. Be gentle now, my friends. These shipbuilders reared in the rugged borders of the north, have northern manners, surly if attacked. But genial when? The proper treatment is. Kindness, like lions whom Demeter tamed. I promise thee, the next time thou art wroth, a second kindness from Alcides hand. Spare me that, king, and take, thyself, a club. King Theseus, thou art far reputed wise. Hast thou not learned a lesson from the hat? of Heracles supreme in, shipbuilding. I by my meekness will abash thy strength. Good Argus, thou art unsurpassed in art. To curve the rougher timbers, to make smooth. The joints and girders, and to plane and work. The iron and the nail heads, and to lift. Row after row the tiers of benches thrice. In triple beauty, and to shape the oars. To raise the mast. Thy knowledge staggers me. How wast thou thus instructed? By much thought? To clamp the decks. 
I stand with brows abashed. Thou art the master, build the ship thyself. Nay, but my knowledge is of mind alone. I cannot so apply it as to build. An Argo. Yet I verily believe. Such mind must pierce far deeper than these names. Seeking the very nature of the things, thou namest thus so pat. Perchance to thee, these logs, nails, bolts, tools, have some life of sense, some subtle language. Tell us what they say. Tis but a jibber, leave the churl alone. Indeed I spake of things I knew hot of. You speak more wisely when you float away, into pure dream, and talk of mystic things. That no man born of woman understands, and therefore does not dare to contradict. He who speaks much and bitterly at last, lays himself open to retort. I think, I never heard such contradictions fly, as when men talk of gods, that never were. Thou wouldst do better to leave men alone. The wisest talk is folly when work waits. Look! How these sturdy villains gape around, fling down their task, and hang upon the words. That flow like nectar from your majesty. In truth, my friend, if you would wear your crown, this side of Orcus, you should go away. A. Let the men work, for a mind as yours, is good, and skill as theirs is also good. But mix the manual and the mental, well. No ship was built by pure philosophy, nor yet designed by artisans. Enough? Come, great Alcides, it is time to go. A fool allows a moment's irritation, to move the purpose of a thousand years. Go, go. Remember, we are met this day. To call upon the name with praise and prayer, of great Athena, since our ship is built, with sculptured olive pregnant in the prow, and all the length of pine is coiled and curled, with the swift serpent's beauty, and the owl, sits in huge state upon the midmost bench. Thus, therefore, by the manifest design, joining the wisdom to the power and will, we build the Argo. What a heavy club! We carry, and how well becomes our figure, the lion's skin. Be still, thou art an ass. The fabled ass, O Zeus descended one. What ass? The one that wore the lion's skin. This fellow were beneath a man's contempt. How should a god born heed him? We are here. Then, to invoke Athena, immolate, the sacred cock upon her altar stone. That she, who sprang in armor from the brain, of the All-Father, may descend to bless. Our labors, since delay grows dangerous. If haply by her power and subtlety, she please to aid the work, and to perform. A prodigy to save us. Mighty queen, that art the balance and the sword alike. In cunning Argus brain, a mighty wisdom, who thus can overshadow such a fool, and make him capable to build a ship, O thou! Athena, whose bright wisdom shone, in this beef-witted fellow, making him, competent even to sweep a stable out. Glorious task, I shall return anon. Nay, follow not. The goddess were displeased, coming, to find our greatest hero gone. This is the midmost hour of day. Arise. And heroes, circling round the sacred stone, in beautiful order and procession grave, while our chief priest, our mightiest in song, the dowered of Phoebus, great Aegis heir, invokes that glory on the sacrifice, that kindles all its slumber into life, and vivid flame descending on the wheel, and chariot of lightning, licking up, the water of the loud resounding sea, lustral, poured seven times upon the earth, and in one flash consuming wood and stone, and the sweet savour of the sacrifice. But when the flame hath darted from the eye, of my divine existence, and hath left, nothing, where was the altar and the earth, the water and the incense, and the victim? Nothing of all remains. Then look to it, that ye invoke not wisdom by the name, of bright Athena, we are here to call, upon that wisdom by that mighty name, who calleth upon wisdom is not wise. Is it not written in the Sibyl's book, that wisdom crieth in the streets aloud, and none regardeth her? Obey my voice. O master of Apollo's ire and light, we are not wise, 
and for that very cause. We meet today to call on wisdom. Well? The altar stands, shadowing the universe. That with my fire of knowledge I destroy. And there is wisdom, but invoke her not? Friends, who is only when none other is. Let us begin, the hour draws on apace. Drive off the demons from the sacrifice. Let all the demons enter and dwell therein. My friends, ye are as ignorant as priests. Let there be silence while the sleeper wakes. O coiled and constricted and chosen. O tortured and twisted and twined. Deep spring of my soul deep frozen. The sleep of the truth of the mind. As a bright snake curled. Round the vine of the world. O sleeper through dawn and o daylight. O sleeper through dusk and through night. O shifted from white light to grey light. From grey to the one black light. Silence and sound. In the far profound. O serpent of scales as an armor. To bind on the breast of a lord. Not deaf to the voice of the charmer. Not blind to the sweep of the sword. I strike to the deep. That thou stir in thy sleep. Rise up from mine innermost being. Lift up the gemmed head to the heart. Lift up till the eyes that were seeing. Be blind, and their life depart. Till the eye that was blind. Be a lamp to my mind. Coil fast all thy coils on me, dying. Absorbed in the sense of the snake. Stir, leave the flower throne, and up flying. Kiss once, and hiss thrice, and awake. Then crown me and cling. Flash forward and spring. Flash forth on the fire of the altar, the stones, and the sacrifice shed, till the three worlds flicker and falter, and life and her love be dead. In mysterious joy, awake, and destroy. It is enough. Too great for a god's strength. Speak. Change. Not to be born. But this is death. Let the light fade. The oracle is past. The voice is past. We are alive again. What spake that silence? This is not a quest. Where strength availeth aught, I shall not go. Nay, brother. The voice was, the end is sorrow. Ye heard not, O dull-witted. Unto me. Alone of all ye wise, the great voice came. The gates of Ho-Ho shall not in all prevail. I heard, regret not thy mortality. Love conquers death. But I, regret not thou. Thine immortality. Love conquers life. A partial wisdom to a partial ear. But what speech came to thee? I heard no voice. What means this? Here's my labor thrown away. My skill made jest of, all my wage destroyed. At one fell stroke. What? Is the Argo burnt? Burnt? Should I then complain? The ship is finished. The goddess, furious at thine absence, Argus hath frenzied thee with some delusion. Calm. Control thy madness. I am sorry now. My pungent wit so shamed his arrogance, as made him seem to scorn Athena. Thou. But see me, I am ruined. The good ship. Is finished. Where is my daily wage? Be sure. I pay thee treble if thy tale be true. A. Eh. Treble nothing. I shall buy a palace. Treble thine utmost wish. Two evils then. Thou pilest on one good. But come and see. The Argo is discovered. By wisdom frame from ancient days. The stately Argo stands above. Too firm to fear, too great to praise. The might of bright Athena's love. O. Oh. Ship of glory. Tread the foam. And bring our guerdon from its home. The silent thought, the hand unseen. The rayless majesty of light, shed from the splendor of our queen, Athena. Mystery and might, these worked invisibly to bring, the end of triumph to our king. Great Jason, wronged by hate of man, shall pass the portals of the deep, shall seek the waters wide and wan, shall pass within the land of sleep, and there the guardians of the soil, shall rest at last from pain and toil. O ruler of the Empyrean, Behold his fervor conquering, the fury of the breed Cadmine, the dragons of the Theban king, and armed men shall spring from earth, in vain toward the gloomy girth. But thou, Athena, didst devise, some end beyond our mortal ken.
thy soul impenetrably wise, shines not to us unthinking men. O guard the warrior band of Greece, and win for us the golden fleece, by miracle this happy day. The ship is finished for our quest, bring thou the glory from the grey, bring thou our spirits into rest. O wisdom, that hast helped so far, sink never thou thy guiding star, then let us gather one and all, and launch our dragon on the main, with paeans raised most musical, until our heroes come again. With watching and with prayer we wait, the imperious destinies of fate, explicit actus secundus, argonauti, actus tertius, Medea, to whomsoever and the British army on the occasion of reading Man and Superman, argonauti, actus tertius, Aetis, Jason, Medea, messengers, chorus of heroes, seen, the palace of Aetis, were this man son of Zeus, beloved of heaven, and skilled with very craft of Maya's son, stronger than Phoebus, subtler than the Sphinx. This plague should catch him, nor my wisdom spare. Thus hast thou sent him unto Hades, king. Not otherwise were such gain possible. Ye are the witnesses that with much skill, and eloquence of shining words, and thought, darkling behind their measured melody, I did dissuade him. Such an enterprise, after such toils no man should likely leave. Remember all the tasks impossible. This hero hath already done, before. He ever touched this sounding coast of thine. Alas! But now his weird is loneliness. Was that from destiny, or will of thine? I love him little, yet my words were true. Nor would it skill him aught if myriad men buckled his back and breast. For when a man batters with sword hilt at the frowning gates, that lead to the beyond, not human force, hardly the favour of the gods themselves, shall stead him in that peril. Yet we know, courage may conquer all things. Such a man, is greater than the gods, if only he, know who he is, that all these gods and men, and things are but the shadows of himself. I cannot give you hope. Await the end. We fear indeed that in the trap, of whiles our king is taken, Lachesis shakes a careless lap, and dooms divine awaken, a desolate and cruel hap, in this sad hour is shaken, the desperate son and violent, of Helios hath designed, a fate more hard than Peleus meant, revolving in his mind, mischief to catch the coiled ascent, of groaning humankind. O bright Athena, hitherto, Protectress of the quest, divide the deep descending blue. Be present, ever blessed. Bring thou the hero Jason through, to victory, and rest. Not by Athena's calm omnipotence. O heroes, look for safety. Little men, looking to God, are blinded, mighty ones. Seeking his presence, reel before the glance. And they, the greatest that may be of men, become that light, and care no whit for earth but all your prayers are answered by yourselves, as I myself achieve this thought of mine, to me thou seemest to blaspheme the gods, but like I seem, O ye of little wit, surely thy tender years and gentle looks, belie such hatred to our king, I scorn, to triumph on an enemy once fallen, fools always, I am tenderer than my years, and gentler than my glances, sayst thou, what, ye know me a most powerful sorceress. So I have heard, O lotus-footed one. Nathless I see not any miracle. Last night the heavy-hearted audience broke up, and Jason wended wearily, his way, oppressed by direful bodements of the fate of this forenoon. I saw him go, sad, and remembered how sublime he stood, bronzed with a ruder sun than ours, and scarred. Rough tokens of old battles, yet so calm, and mild, with all that vigour, that to me, came a swift pity, the enchanter's bane, that I flung from me, but my subtle soul, struck its own bosom with the sword of thought, so that I saw not pity, but desire, surely a bane more potent than the first, love is itself enchantment, some kind god, whispers from this a little light of hope, only the hopeless are the happy ones, but didst thou turn him from his gleaming goal, 
Cover that shame with sweeter shame than this. Thou knowest that his vigil was to keep, invoking all Olympus all the night, and then to yoke the oxen, and to plough, the fearful furrow, sow the dreadful seed, smite down the armies, and assuage the pest, of slime thrice coiled about the sacred grove. Thy bitter love disturbed that solitude, not bitter, heroes, see ye yet the end. Our good quest ended by thy father's hate, and by thy own hour's madness. This I see, but if he gain the fleece, a blissful end, this end and that are moulded diversely. Riddle no more, nor ply with doubtful hope. Hearts ready to rejoice and to despair, equally minded, at the midmost hour, his mind given up to sleepless muttering, of charms not mine, decrees Olympian. All on a sudden he felt fervent arms, flung round him, and a sweet hot body's rush, lithe to embrace him, and a cataract, of amber-scented hair hissing about, his head, and in the darkness two great eyes, flaming above him, and the whole face filled, with fire and shapen as kisses, and those arms, and kisses and mad movements of quick love, burnt up his being, and his life was lost, in woman's love at last, unseemly act, who dared thus break on meditation, I surely thy passion mastered thee, O queen, I tell you, thus the night passed, verily, the woman raves, such victory as this, outsails all shame, before the dawn was up, I bound such talismans about his breast, that fire and steel grow dew and flowery wreaths, for all their power to hurt him, presently, I made a posset, drugged with somnolence, sleepy with poppy and white hellebore, fit for the dragon, this was my design, beware thy father's anger when he finds, his plans thus baffled, he will murder us, heroes indeed ye are, and lion hearts, no woman need school me in bravery, rather a hare, most impudent of whores, but when my husband comes victorious, fleece laden, he will rather, wilt thou then, further my ruin, making known this shame, here is the argive sense of gratitude, let me stir up its subtler thought, and show, what favours ye may gather afterward, from hands and lips ye scorn, not courteously, what, canst thou save me from this newer doom, I love your leader with no mortal love, but with the whole strength of a sorceress, it seems indeed thy hot will can bewitch, our chaste one with one action impudent, I will not leave him ever in the world, persistence in these ills, will cure them not, worst is the hunter, worse the hound, when bad, is the stag's name, we rule locus land, indeed the hunter follows, I despise, lewd conduct in the lowest, and detest, spells hurtful to the head, when ancient hags, brew their bad liquors at the waning moon, barking their chance of murder, but to rule, a land, and wive a king, and breed to him, kings, then such persons are unsuitable, unless these words were well repented of, I might transform ye into, stay, great queen, well for your respite comes this messenger, queen and fair mother of great kings unborn, and mighty chosen of the land of Greece, a tiding of deep bliss is born to you, tell me that Jason has achieved the quest, truth is no handmaid unto happiness, what terror dost thou fill my heart with all, O timorous heroes, let the herald speak, who meets fear drives her back, who flees from fear, stumbles, who cares not, sees her not, speak on, terrible bellowings as of angry bulls, broke from the stable as the first swift shaft, of dawn smote into it, and stampings fierce, resounded, shaking the all-mother earth, whereunto came the calm and kingly man, smiling as if a sweet dream still beguiled, his waking brows, not caring any more, for spring or summer, heeding least of all, that tumult of ox fury, suddenly, a light sprang in his face, the great hand shot, forth, and broke in the brass-bound door, the day, passed with him inwards, then the brazen hoofs, beat with a tenfold fury on the stone, but Jason, swiftly turned, evaded these, and chose two oxen from that monstrous herd, 
to whose vast heads he strode, and by the horns, plucked them. Then fire, devouring, sprang at him. From furious nostrils, and indignant breath, fountains of seething smoke, spat forth at him, but with no tremor of aught that seemed like fear, drew them by sheer strength from their place, and yoked, their frenzy to his plough, and with the goad, urged them, thrice trampling the accursed field, until the furrows flamed across the sun, treading whose glory stood Apollo's self, as witness of the deed, then a last thrust. Savage, drove them less savage to their stalls, and Jason turned and laughed, then drew he out, the dreadful teeth of woe, Cadmean stock, of Thebes' old misery, and presently, pacing the furrowed field, he scattered them, with muttered words of power athwart the course, of the bright moon, due path of pestilence, and terror, ere the last bone fell to earth, the accursed harvest sprang to life, armed men, fiery with anger, rose upon the earth, while Jason stood, one witnessing a dream, not one who lives his life, the sword and spear, turn not to him, but mutual madness strikes, the warriors witless, and fierce wrath invades, their hearts of fury, and with arms engaged, they fell upon each other silently, and slew, and slew, as in the middle seas, a mirage flashes out and passes, so, the phantoms faded, and the way was clear, thus, stepping ever proud and calm, he went, unto the grove of Uri's, where the worm, huge in his hatred, guarded all, but now, sunk in some stupor, surely sent of Zeus, he stirred not, stepping delicately past, the dragon, then came Jason to the grove, and saw what tree umbrageous bore the fruit, that he had saddened for so long, and he, rending the branches of that wizard oak, with a strong grasp, tore down the fleece of gold, then came a voice, woe, woe, is isle, the glory is departed, and a voice, answered it woe, then Jason seemed to see, some fear behind the little form of fears, and his face blanched a moment, as beholding, some fate, some distant grief, then, catching sight, now of the glory of his gain, he seemed, caught in an ecstasy, treading the earth, as in a brighter dream than Aphrodite, sent ever to a man, he turned himself, we could not see him for the golden flame, burning about him, moving hitherward, but I took horse and hasted, since reward, may greet such tidings, and for joy to see, your joy exceed my joy, reward indeed, awaits thee from such folk as us, who stand, in fear of life, when great Aetis hears, this news, and how all came, my lady's smile, is the reward I sought, not place nor gold, thou hast it, child, the hero is at hand, O happy of mortals, O fronter of fear, the impassable portals, ye heavens, give ye ear, our song shall be rolled in the praise of the gold, and its, glory be told where the heavenly fold rejoices too, hold the stars in its sphere, O hero Lolkian, warrior king, from the kingdom Colchian, the fleece dust bring, our song shall be sung and its melody flung where the, lyre and the tongue are fervid and young, all, islands among where the sirens sing, thou bearest, strong shoulder, the sunbright fleece, glow swifter and bolder, and brighter, and cease, O glory of light, O woven of night, O shining and, bright, O dream of delight, how splendid the, sight for the dwellers of Greece, gained is the guerdon, the prize is won, the fleecy burden, the sow of the sun, the toil is over, the days discover high joys that hover, of lover and lover, and fates above her are fallen, and done, queen of this people, O oh my heart's desire, spotless, the lady of my love, and friends, by whose heroic ardors I am found, victor at last, well girded with the spoil, of life in gleaming beauty, and this prize, thrice precious, my Medea, all is won, needs only now the favoring kiss of bums, bright born of Eos, to fulfill for us, the last of all the labors, to inspire, the quick raised sail, 
and fill that flushing gold, with thrice desired breath, that once again, our prow plunge solemn in the Argive waters, to strains of music, victory at peace, mingling with sweeter epithalamy, to tell our friends how happy was the quest, but not those strains of music, though divine, from Orpheus winged lyre, exalt at all, our joy to joy, beyond all music's power, I fear Aetis and the Pelian guile, fear is but failure, herald of distress, what virtue lives there in the coward's heart? In sooth, I have no fear at all, to flee, night, like a mist, steals softly from the east, the hand of darkness gathers up the folds, of day's gold garment, and the valleys sink, into slow sadness, though the hills retain, that brilliance for a little, let us go? Methinks that under cover of the night, I may escape Aetis, if he chase, our Argo is not battered by rough winds, so far but what some fight were possible. I know a better way than that, my lord. This boy shall come with us. Ah, not to Greece. He needs tomorrow's king. With us, I said. To Greece, I said not. What is this? Thou hintest at some dangerous destiny. Come, love, to the long years of love with me. Form, heroes, and in solemn order stride the body guardians of the golden fleece, guarding your king and queen on every side, we sail triumphant to the land of Greece, a woman's love, a woman's power be told, through ages, gainers of the fleece of gold, explicit actus tertius, argonauti, actus quartus, sirene, tower micron council of on Eckartshausen and Laura Graham, Lucille Hill, Mary Beaton, on the occasion of homecoming, argonauti, Actus Quartus, Jason, Medea, Orpheus, Theseus, Heracles, Chorus of Heroes, the Sirens, Scene, the Argo, A. I would murder not my brother only, but tear my own limbs, strew them on the sea, to keep one fury from the man I love. This act and speech are much akin to madness. Remember that your own skins pay the price. I now remember somewhat of the voice, of the oracle, that madness should hunt hard, on the thief's furtive track, upon the prow, brooding, and at the table president, and spouse-like in the bed. But this is like, that Indian fable of a king, how he, taking some woman, an indecent act, not proper to be done, against the will, of priests or princes, sought the nuptial bed, and, climbed the bed's disastrous side, he found a serpent, not a bride, and scarcely daring to draw breath, he passed the dumb night hours with death, till in the morning cold and grey, the hooded fear glided away, which morning saw ten thousand pay, the price of jesting with a king, indeed these toils and dangerous pursuits, labours and journeys, go to make one mad, well were it to beguile our weariness, with song, and here is the sole king of song, my song breaks baffled on the rocks of time, if thy bewitching beauty be the theme, sing me thy song, sweet poet, of the sea, that song of swimming when thy love lost sense, before the passion of the infinite, the more so as my master warns me oft, of late how near that island is, where dwell, the alluring daughters of Melpomene, light shed from seaward over breakers bending, kiss wise to the emerald hollows, light divine, Whereof the sun is God, the sea his shrine, light in vibrations rhythmic, light unending, light sideways from the girdling crags extending, unto this lone and languid head of mine, light, that fulfills creation as with wine, flows in the channels of the deep, light, rending, the adamantine columns of the night, is laden with the love song of the light, light, pearly glimmering through dim gulf and hollow, below the foam-kissed lips of all the sea, light shines from all the sky and up to me, from the amber floors of sand, light calls Apollo, the shafts of fire fledged of the eagle follow, the crested surf, and strike the shore, and flee, far from green cover, nymph enchanted lee, foynton, and plume them white as the sea swallow, and turn and quiver in the ocean, seeming, the glances of a maiden kissed, or dreaming, light, as I swim through rollers green and gleaming, 
sheds its most subtle sense to penetrate, this heart I thought impervious to fate. Now the sweet light, the full delight, is beaming, through me and burns me, all my flesh is teeming, with the life kisses of the sea, my mate, my mistress, till the fires of life abate, and leave me languid, man forgotten, deeming, I see in sleep, in many colored night, more hope than in the flame waves of the light, light I ever light, I swim far out and follow, the footsteps of the wind, and light invades, my desolate soul, and all the cypress shades, glow with transparent luster, and the hollow, I thought I had hidden in my heart must swallow, the bitter draught of truth, no nereid maids, even in my sea are mine, the whole sea's glades, and hills and springs are void of my Apollo, the sea herself my tune and my desire, the sun himself my lover and my lyre, this song is sweeter than the honeycomb, nearly as sweet as good friends quarrelling, look, friends, methinks I see a sylvan shape, like faint mist floating on the farthest sea, I see a barren rock above the tides, I hear a sound like water whispering, I hear a harsh noise like some ancient crone, muttering curses, now I hear a song, tis like some shape of sleep that moans for joy, some bridal sob of love, O son of God, my poet, swiftly leap the live lyre forth, else we are all enchanted, yet to me, this song is no wise lovely, but in him, I note the live look of the eyes leap up, and all his love for me forgotten straight, at the mere echo of that tune, hark, friends, he is tune, my Colchian harbour song, I hear the waters faint and far, and look to where the polar star, half hidden in the haze, divides, the double chanting of the tides, but, where the harbour's gloomy mouth, welcomes the stranger to the south, the water shakes, and all the sea, grows silver suddenly, as one who's standing on the moon, sees the vast horns in silver hewn, himself in darkness, and beholds, how silently all space unfolds, into her shapeless breast the spark, and sacred phantom of the dark, so in the harbour horns I stand, till I forget the land, who sails through all that solemn space, out to the twilight's secret place, the sleepy waters move below, his ship's imaginary flow, no song, no lute, so lowly chaunts, in woods where still a risby haunts, wrapping the wanderer with her tresses, into untold caresses, for none of all the sons of men, that hath known Artemis, again, turns to the warmer earth, nor vows, his secrets to another spouse, the moon resolves her beauty in, the sea's deep kisses salt and keen, the sea assumes the lunar light, and he, their eremity, in their calm intercourse and kiss, even hell itself no longer is, for nothing in their love abides, that passes not beneath their tides, and whoso bathes in light of theirs, and water, changes unawares, to be no separate soul, but be, himself the moon and sea, not all the wealth that flowers shed, and sacred streams on that calm head, not all the earth's spell-weaving dream, and scent of new-turned earth shall seem, again indeed his mother's breast, to breathe like sleep and give him rest, he lives or dies in subtler swoon, between the sea and moon, so standing, gliding, undeterred, by any her alluring word, that calls from older forest glades, my soul forgets the gentle maids, that wooed me in the scarlet bowers, and golden cluster woof of flowers, forgets itself, content to be, between the moon and sea, no passion stirs their depth, nor moves, no life disturbs their sweet dead loves, no being holds a crown or throne, they are, and I in them, alone, only some lute player grown star, is heard like whispering flowers afar, and some divided, single tune, sobs from the sea and moon, amid thy mountains shall I rise, O moon, and float about thy skies, beneath thy waters shall I roam, O sea, and call thy valleys home, or on Daedalian oage fair, forth in the interlunar air, imageless mirror life, to be, soul between moon and sea, 
No song can lure us while he sings so well. But look, I see entrancing woman forms. That beckon, fairy-like and not of earth. So, fitter than the bed of this my queen. To rest heroic limbs. The wretched one. Thou knowest that their kiss is death. Perhaps. It were their kiss. Are not my kisses sweet? Listen, they sing. This time the words ring true. Sailing across that blue abyss between. Like young birds winging their bright flight the notes. Glimmer across the sea. They sing, they sing. O mortal, tossed on life's unceasing ocean. Whose waves of joy and sorrow never cease. Eternal change, one changeless thing, commotion. Even in death no hint of calm and peace. Here is the charm, the life-assuaging potion. Here is a better home for thee than Greece. Come, lover, to my deep, soft, sleepy breast. Here is thy rest. O mortal, sad is life. But in my kisses, thou mayst forget its fever-parched thirst. Age, death, and sorrow fade in slender blisses. My swoon of love drinks up the draught accursed. And all thy seasons grow as sweet as this is. One constant summer in sleep's bosom nursed. All storm and sunlight, star and season, cease. Here is thy peace. O mortal, sad is love. But my dominion, extends beyond love's ultimate abode. Eternity itself is but a minion, lighting my way on the untraveled road. Gods, shelter neath one shadow of my pinion. Thou only tread the path none else hath trod. Come, lover, in my breast all blooms above. Here is thy love, my poet, now, the one song in the world. Above us on the mast is spread, the splendor of the fleece. Before us, Argive maidens tread, the glowing isles of Greece. Behind us, fear and toil are dead. Below, the breakers cease, the holy light is on my head. My very name is Peace, the water's music moves, and swings. The sea's eternal breast, the wind above us whistles, rings, and wafts us to the west. Greece lures us on with beckonings, and sighs of slumber blessed. I am not counted with the kings, my very name is Rest. Medea shoots her sweetest glance, and Jason bends above. Young virgins in locust dance, hearing the news thereof. The heroes, see their glad advance. Hath Greece not maids enough? I lie in love's ecstatic trance. My very name is Love. Come over the water, love, to me. Come over the little space. Come over, my lover, and thou shalt see. The beauty of my face. Come over the water. I will be. A bride and a queen, and a lover to thee. Come over the water, love, and lie. All day and all night to kiss. Come over, my lover, an hour to die. In the language baffling bliss, come over the water, must I sigh, thy lover and bride and queen and I. Come over the water, love, and bide, an hour in my swift caress. So short is the space, and so smooth the tide. More smooth is my loveliness. Come over the water, love, to my side. I am thy lover and queen and bride. Sing, poet, ere the rash fool leap. Ah, Zeus! The hearts of Greeks with sharper flames, burn than with one fire of all fire. We have the races and the games, the song, the chisel, and the lyre. We have the altar, we the shrine, and ours the joy of love and wine. Why take one pleasure, put aside, the myriad bliss of life diverse. Unchanging joy will soon divide, into the likeness of a curse. Have we no maidens, slender, strong? daughters of tender-throated song. I swear by Aphrodite's eyes. Our Grecian maids are fairer far. What love as sweet as theirs is lies. In sun or planet, moon or star. What nymphs as sweet as ours are dwell. By foreign grove and alien well. With every watchman's cheery cry. Land ho! Through all the journeying years. Our ever-hoping hearts reply. A land of bliss at last appears. But what land lacks a foreign foam? So sweet as is the hero's home. At every port the novel sights. Charm for an hour, delusive bliss. On every shore the false delights. Of maidens ply the barbarous kiss. 
But where did Hero think to stay, lulled in their love beyond a day? No shoreland whistles to the wind, so musically as Thrace, no town, so gladdens the toil-weary mind. As brave Athene, no renown, stands so divine in war and peace, as the illustrious name of Greece, this island of the subtle song, shall vanish as the shaken spray, tossed by the billow far and strong, on marble coasts, we will not stay, dreams low not those who ply the sail, before, the home, behind, the gale, ah, I am torn, I am torn, God's poet, hail, help us, Apollo, light of sun, awake, this is the desperate hour, I have no strength, beware the third, the awful ecstasy, a higher spell controls a lower song, listen, they sing, joy, joy, they sing, they sing, O lover, I am lonely here, O lover, I am weeping, each pearl of ocean is a tear, let fall while love was sleeping, a tear is made of fire and dew, and saddened with a smile, the sun's laugh in the curving blue, lasts but a little while, the night winds kiss the deep, the stars, shed laughter from above, but night must pass dawn's prison bars, night hath not tasted love, with me the night is fallen in day, the day swoons back to night, the white and black are woven in grey, faint sleep of silken light, a strange soft light about me shed, devours the sense of time, hovers about my sleepy head, some sweet persistent rhyme, beneath my breast my love may hear, deep murmur of the billows, O oh, gather me to thee, my dear, on soft forgetful pillows, O oh, gather me in arms of love, as maidens plucking posies, or mists that fold about a dove, or valleys full of roses, O oh, let me fade and fall away, from waking into sleep, from sleep to death, from gold to grey, deep as the skies are deep, O oh, let me fall from death to dream, eternal monotone, faint even tired of sleep supreme, with thee and love alone, a jewelled night of star and moon, shall watch our bridal chamber, bending the blue rays to the tune, of softly sliding amber, dim winds, shall whisper echoes off, our slow ecstatic breath, telling all worlds how sweet is love, how beautiful is death, sing, Orpheus, this doth madden them the most, should one man leap, this tune is terrible, I am not moved, although I am a man, so strong a safeguard is cool chastity, but love thou me, my husband is distraught, madness is on him for thy punishment, sing, therefore, this last song of theirs was sweet, thine therefore should be sweeter, the gods grant it, lift up this love of peace and bliss, the starry soul of wine, destruction's formidable kiss, the lamp of the divine, this shadow of a nobler name, whose life is strife, whose soul is fame, I rather will exalt the soul, of man to loftier height, and kindle at a livelier coal, the subtler soul of light, from these soft splendors of a dream, I turn, and seek the self-supreme, this world is shadow shaken off, the bitterness of pain, vain are the little lamps of love, the light of life is vain, life, death, joy, sorrow, age and youth, are phantoms of a further truth, beyond the splendor of the world, false glittering of the gold, a serpent is in slumber curled, in wisdom's sacred cold, life is the flaming of that flame, death is the naming of that name, the forehead of the snake is bright, with one immortal star, lighting her coils with living light, to where the nenuphar, sleeps for her couch, all darkness dreams, the thing that is not, only seems, that star upon the serpent's head, is called the soul of man, that light in shadows subtly shed, the glamour of life's plan, the sea whereon that lotus grows, is thought's abyss of tears and woes, leave Cyrenusa, even Greece, forget, they are not there, by worship cometh not the peace, the silence not by prayer I, leave the illusions, life and time, and death, and seek that star sublime, until the lotus and the sea, and snake no longer are, and single through eternity, 
exists alone the star, and utter knowledge rise and cease, in that which is beyond the peace, those isles have faded, was this vision true, I know not what hath passed, I seem asleep, still, with the dream yet racing in my brain, there was a sweetness, whether sight or song, I know not, but my veins grew strong and swollen, and madness came upon me, you are here, let that suffice, remember not, but now, I see the haze lift on the water way, and hidden headlands loom again, I know, the pleasant portals, here is home at last, the sunset comes, the mist is lifted now, to let the last kiss of the daylight fall, once ere night whisper sleep, and see, the ship, glides between walls of purple, the green land, cools the tired eyes, the rocks stand sentinel, let still the song that saved us gladden us, lift up thy lyre, sweet Orpheus, on the sea, over a sea like stained glass, at sunset like a chrysoprase, our smooth oared vessel overrides, crimson and green and purple tides, between the rocky isles we pass, and greener islets gay with grass, between the overarching sides, our pinnace glides, just by the menad haunted hill, songs rise into the air, and thrill, like clustered birds at evening, when love outlingers rain and spring, faint faces of strange dancers spill, their dewy scent, and sweet and chill, the wind comes faintly whispering, on wanton wing, between the islands sheer and steep, our craft treads noiseless over the deep, turned to the gold heart of the west, the sun's last sigh of love expressed, ere the lake glimmer, borrow sleep, from clouds and tinge their edges, weep, that night brings love not to his breast, but only rest, we move toward the golden track, shed in the water, we look back, eastward, where rose is set to warn, promise and prophecy of dawn, reflected, lest the ocean lack, in any space serene or slack, some color, blushing over the form, dim lighted lawn, and under all the shadowy shapes, of steep and silent bays and capes, the water takes its darkest hue, catches no laughter from the blue, no purple ray, or gold escapes, but dim green shadow comes and drapes, its luster, thus the night burns through, tall groves of you, thither, are thither, hollow vales, trembling with early nightingales, languish, O sea of sleep, young moon, dream on above in maiden swoon, none daring to invoke the gales, to shake our sea, and swell our sails, not song, but silence, were a boon, save for this tune, round capes grown darker as night falls, we see at last the splendid walls, that ridge the bay, the town lies there, lighted, the temple's hour for prayer, at grave harmonious intervals, the grand voice of some seaman calls, just as the picture fades, aware, how it was fair, a thousand victories bring us to the shore, whence we set out, look forth, the people come, moving with lights about the anchorage, to greet the heroes of the golden fleece, my queen, Medea, welcome unto Greece, explicit actus quartus, Argonauti, actus quintus, Ares, Tau Omicron common sense and to the Kabbalists clergymen peers alchemists subaltern sorcerers thieves necromancers missionaries lunatics doctors and Rosicrucians prostitutes among whom I have lived, being in England, on the occasion of my going away. Argonauti? Actus Quintus. Jason, Medea, Peleus, Acastus, Alcestis and her sisters, Madness. Seen, the palace at Leucus. Black Ares hath called. Me forth from the deep blind and appalled, shall the palace high walled, shake as I leap, over the granite, the marble over, one step to span it, one flight to hover, like a moon round a planet, a dream round a lover, how shall I come, shrieking and yelling, or quiet and dumb, to the heart of the dwelling, silently striding, whispering terror, into their ears, watching, abiding, madness and error, brooder of fears, thus will I bring, black Ares to honor, draw the black sting, of the serpent upon her, 
How foolish to fight, with the warrior God, who brings victory bright, or defeat with a nod, who standeth to smite, with a spear and a rod. Here is the woman, thinking no evil, wielding the human, by might of a devil, but I will mock her, with cunning design, in my malice lock her, the doom is divine, I, I. This rankles sorely in my mind, that Peleus should wander, free to slide, his sidelong looks among our courtiers, ripe ever for some mischief, yet methinks, there is a wandering other than this present, say, by the Stygian waves, unburied corpse, but, for the means, it ill befits our power, and grace, my husband's honour, to stretch forth, the arm of murder over the head of age, but surely must be means, the prophecy, happy my thought be, I have found it, ha! Athena shall relent not till the king, shall die and live, vainly the prophet meant, mere transference of the crown, Fu twist his saying, today's the children, fools they are, so mask, evil beneath the waxen face of good, trick out calamity in robes of luck, come, children, is the sun bright, and your eyes, dear queen, all is well with us, such happiness, crowds daylight, even sleep seems sorrowful, though bright with dainty dreams, but you are sad, I meditate the ancient prophecy, thus a foreboding is upon my heart, seeing some danger follow yet, overhang, our heads, poised gaily in incertitude, nay, grieve not, dear Medea, all men say, the prophecy is well fulfilled, Amy. Until the king shall die and live again. What means that? I have meditated long. To what sad end? At the full end I see. Allusion to my magic, to that spell. Whereby an old man may renew his youth. Our father. You have guessed aright, my child? Your father must abandon his old age. And, by my magic, find sweet youth again. But this is very difficult to do. For me such miracles are merely play, serving to while away the idle hours, while Jason hunts, how grand it were to see, our aged father rival the strong youths, in feats of great agility, agreed. But surely you should work the charm yourselves, for children magic is a blithesome game. Dear lady, teach us how to say the spell, words must be aided by appalling deeds. Oh you frighten us. Be brave, my child I. I too passed through unutterable things. Let me fetch father. Nay, consider first. Would he consent? The process is severe. We know the sire is not exactly brave. Though very wise and good. Tis clear to me. Without his knowledge we must do the deed. What is this deed? A cauldron is prepared. And, having hewn your father limb from limb, we seethe him in a broth of magic herbs, and then, the proper incantations said, there rises from the steam a youthful shape, more godlike than like man, and he will fall, in kind embraces on his children's necks. O oh queen, this process seems indeed severe. Without his knowledge must the thing be done. This also seems to us no easy task. He sleeps through noon, while others are abroad. Let us make haste. Dear queen, how good you are. One thing remember I while you say the spell. Here is the parchment. Let no thought arise. In any of your minds. Remember that. Else, o oh to 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 toy. What woe is this? The charm is broken. And our father. Lost. I I. I I. I I. I I. I I. Be brave. Dear sisters, pluck your courage up. Easy this one condition. All is safe. Haste, then. Good luck attend you. When the hunt returns, how joyful. Striding vigorous. The man renewed grasps Jason in embrace. Worthy of Heracles. Thanks, thanks, dear queen. We go, we go. The goddess be your speed. Thus will the danger pass. That vicious fool shall cease his plots against my best beloved. No taint of fell complicity shall touch my honor in this matter. I will sleep.
through the delicious hours of breezy noon. Lulled by sweet voices of my singing maids, secure at least that no one will attempt to wreck my virtue or restore my youth. O oh, sleep of lazy love, be near in dreams to lift the veil, and silence from the shadowy sphere, to conjure in Our Lady's ear. The voices fall and fail, the light is lowered, O oh, dim sleep, over her eyelids creep. The world of dreams is shapen fair, beyond a mortal's nod, a fragrant and a sunny air. Smiles, a man's kisses vanish there, grow kisses of a god and in dreams darkness subtly grows, no earth-flowered bloom of rose, O oh, dreams of love and peace, draw nigh, hover with shadowy wings, let shining shapes of ecstasy, cover the frail blue veil of sky, and speak immortal things, dream, lady, dream through summer noon, lulled by the sleepy tune, the sense is riven, and the soul, goes glimmering to the abode, where eons in one moment roll, and one thought shapes to its control, body's forgotten load, Our Lady sleeps, Our Lady smiles in far Elysian isles, thrice have I crept towards the bed, and thrice, an unseen hand has caught the uplifted knife, a grinning face lurked out from the blank air, between me and that filthy sorceress, daily I poison the she-devil's drink, and nothing harms her, I have a toad whose breath, destroys all life, thou dealest in such arts, a. Eh? For this hate's sake, are we sisters all, herein, true sisters, the familiar soul, sucks at her mouth, she sickens not nor dies, more poisonous than he, ah. Beast of hell, what may avail us, Jason is quite lost, in her black sorceries, our chance gone, our life, degraded to her service, we who are, more nobly, are become her minions, slaves, not handmaidens, ototototoi, I, I, what misery, see, the lady weeps, I, I, the black fiend, how he dogs my feet, the fatal day, I, I, what sorrow thus, maiden, removes the feet of fortitude, who shall arouse him, Peace, Our Lady sleeps, ah me! But she must wake, a black, black deed, hangs on the house, what meets my waking ear, Alcestis, ah, dear queen, lament, lament, I am undone by my own, what? The work, alas I alas, the work, thy father, slain? I I, the old man slain, I I. I, I, the strong SPDL broken. Nay, but thoughts arose. So many thoughts, or ever I was where. And he, the cauldron seethes. He rises not. Naught but moist smoke springs up. Alas! For me, all is but lost. Canst thou do anything? Nothing. I, 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 I. What? Shall the hunter find his joy abroad, and sorrow in his house, thy very hearth, polluted with the old man's blood? What blood? Answer me, woman, to thy knees, false hound, falling to snap. What misery, pale slaves! Lament ye! Ah! The ill omen! Ah! The day! Alcestis hath her sire in error slain. Sister! O brother, bear thine anger back! speak. Ah, the prophecy. I, I. I, I. What folly masks what wickedness. Speak on. I cannot speak. Speak thou, Medea. The child? Hath hewn her sire asunder, seething him. In herbs of sacred power. By thy decree. Nay. Safer is it to admit to these. Fools, charge the child with lack of fortune. Yea. I bade her take a waxen shape, carved well, to look like the old man, nay, nay, the sire, himself we stole on sleeping, hewn apart, I, I, I said not thus, I am so wild, bewildered with these tears, enough of this, it is the malice of that sorceress, disguised, 
she well knows how. Thus, thus it is. We know the witch is cunning. Dogs and fools. For this ye die. Nobility, and love. Urge my own sanction to support the wife. I bade my queen prepare this spell. Disputes. Your arrogance my kingship. A, indeed. Now justice turns against thee, fickle jade. As fortune. Mine is a boy's arm, but I. Advance against thee an impervious blade. And give thee in thy throat and teeth the lie. Boys bluster. Justice will be satisfied. It will be best to flee. But what is this? A sword. I scorn a sword. I scorn a boy. Let none suppose me fearful. Give not back. It will be finer far to go away. As those disdaining aught but their own love. A. Let us leave these folks in gratitude. My husband. In thy love alone I rest. This splendor and this toil alike resume. Our life from the long honeymoon of love. We wish at heart. To Corinth. Creon bears. The name of favorable to suppliants. How virtue tames these tameless ones. Today. I am indeed a man. Thou brainless boy. Thus, thus, and thus I smite thee on the cheek. Thus, thus I spit upon thy face. Out, dog. His patience shows as something marvelous. Virtue takes insult from the fortuneless. The curse of Uri's dog you into Hades. I have my reasons. A, my reasons plain. Going, not forced. Yet going, that is good. To Corinth. Bride of my own heart, Medea. Well hast thou put thy power off for the time. Preferring love to pomp, and peace to revel. And the soft cushions of the moss-grown trees. To royal pillows, and the moon's young light. To gaudy lamps of antique workmanship. And music of the birds to harps of gold. Struck by unwilling fingers for gold coin. Comet lest the curse I call upon this house. Eat us up also. May the red plague rot. Their bones? I lift my voice and prophesy. The curse shall never leave this house of fear. But one by treachery shall slay another. And vengeance shall smite one, and one lay bare. Her breasts in vain for love, until the house. Perish in uttermost red ruin. Bah! Speared wild cats bravely spit. To Creon, come. Black Ares hath chosen. Me wisely, to send. A doom deep frozen. From now to the end. Never the curse. Shall pass from the house. But gather a worse. Hate for a spouse. The lovers are better. Escape from my toils. Than these in the fetter. Of the golden spoils. Yet still lies a doom. For the royal lovers. Time bears in her womb. That darkness covers. A terror, and waits. The hour that is fates. The work is done. Let miracle inspire. Lulkian voices to the holy hymn. Praise to black Ares, echo of this doom. So fearful is the wrath divine. That once aroused it shall not sleep. Though prostrate slaves before the shrine. Pray, praise, do sacrifice, and weep. Ten generations following past. Shall not exhaust the curse at last. From father unto son it flees. An awful heritage of woe. Wives fear its cancerous prodigies. Invade their wombs, the children know. The inexpiable word, exhaust. Not by a tenfold holocaust. Thus let mankind abase in fear. Their hearts, nor sacrilege profane. The awful slumber of the seer. The dread aditum of the fane nor gain the mockery of a fleece, losing reality of peace. Hail to wild Uris. Men, rejoice, that he can thus avenge his shrine. One solemn cadence of that voice, peal through the ages, shake the spine, of very time, and plunge success. False winged into surefoot distress. Hail to black Uris. Warrior, hail, thou glory of the shining sword. What proven armor may avail? Against the vengeance of the Lord. Athena's favor must withdraw. Before the justice of thy law. Hail to the Lord of glittering spears. The monarch of the mighty name. The master of ten thousand fears. Whose sword is as a scarlet flame. Hail to black Ares. Wild and pale. The echo answers me, all hail. Explicit actors Quintus.